Ubisoft trashed after Assassin's Creed Shadows debuts new uh is it collectic uh collectors collectible featuring Yasuke and Naoe alongside what appears to be a destroyed Tori gate. Now, great, what do you know about this Tori gate incident? It's from the time during, you know, World War II, if I'm not mistaken. And yes, they used that as a reference material, which uh, come on, you could have used something else rather than something, yep. you know, one of those the most iconic, not in a good way, terrible times in Japan. You could have used something else. You could have easily used something else as a reference material for your statue. But you know what they could you, have, you know what they could have done? Instead of having a one-legged Torah gate, they could just have an actual Torah gate that's not destroyed. That's what they could have done. Yeah. It would have been that easy. They Look, in yeah. the back, they actually have a silhouette of something that resembles it. Why couldn't yeah. they just do that, right? I feel like this is deliberate. Because this has, in order for it, your, your design to actually come to fruition yeah. from concept to modeling to actually getting it, you know, freaking turn into a figure, it goes through a lot of um a, a lot of a scru uh, you know scrutiny and it goes through a lot of approvals before it gets a, before it actually yeah. becomes a product like that yeah like with the fact are, that I know some people are saying it's a coincidence but look look at the like the rim at the bottom and the one on top like it's pretty much one to one in my opinion like it if they if there was no rims or I don't mm -hmm. know what to call the border or whatever you call it the the black ring. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you can make that argument, but look, it's the same. The positioning of the bottom one and the top, the one on top, it's exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, man, and, and it, it's just like this is another thing that makes and goes to show that how disrespectful Ubisoft is to the Japanese culture, or, or you know, to to Japan in general, right? They already had so much, um, different paintings and uh, that that's from a different like you know freaking uh time. Like you know, a, a different century. Another thing is uh Tokyo Game. Uh, uh no, it was it wasn't Tokyo Game Show. It was like a Japan Japan Game Fest or something like that earlier this year. They used uh Roanora Zoro's uh sword as a prop. You know, that's from One Piece. You're like, are you are you serious? And now you're having this. You're having you know, calling him the legendary samurai, which he's not a samurai. And uh, I I, I it's just it feels like they don't care. Right, and then you have the the crazy, you know, terrible fidelity that is the game that we saw at the world's trailer. Like, oh, I think I don't think they care, right? We're over here, this is from a Razor Fist Ubisoft, including an artifact from the nuclear detonation, a one-sided arch in what uh, promises to be the biggest bomb of the year. God, this is the stand-up comedian. Yeah, this is really really bad. But then here's the thing, it's not over, right? They have news early, uh, earlier this week that not just not just uh, what's it called again, um, Assassin's Creed Shadow that's going through a lot of stuff, but Star Wars Outlaws has has been going through a lot of stuff too. Like yeah. if you haven't if you haven't seen this already, uh, right over here, Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, we've been roaming uh, the Outer Rim for almost a, a month now. We want to thank you again for your support. Your feedback is invaluable in helping us prioritize the improvements and the changes uh, we want to make to the game. We are hard at work creating multiple title platforms. I'm oh, sorry, title updates, which will be optimizing the gameplay, polishing, and tweaks, as well as quality of life changes, including adjustments into combat and stuff gameplay. We've seen gameplay is really awful. That is not all. Our very first story pack, Star Wars Outlaws Wildcard, will also launch on November 21st, and we'll uh, we'll see Kay and Nix in infiltrate the high stakes of Sabak uh, tournament, and will be free. If you actually go over here, it's actually going to be free. Right, our players uh, for our PC players, it was actually going to be uh, launching on Steam. Yeah, that, that's well. the big. Yeah, it's like I think the shareholders that's not part of the Guillermo family, they're mm -hmm. starting to be very aggressive. Like, hey, we we gotta steer, we gotta steer the boat in the right direction because like we're gonna we're, we've been crashing really hard. Yeah. So I hope that they they you know they win and actually you know. Either convince the family or they kick them out so that they could you could go back to the or to the old Ubisoft days, not this new one, where clearly they're they got the ESG slash DEI money and they keep they they should stop making these template games where everything has to be open world, everything has to be capture the outpost to reveal the part of the map and stuff. It's get people are tired of that shit, man. You you gotta. You know, go back to your roots, make smaller games, make a Splinter Cell remake and stuff like that. 
beyond good and evil to go back to being the old Ubisoft. Yep, and then here's a follow-up article right over here from uh, yesterday. It's Ubisoft developers reportedly reveal company brushes off legitimate criticism as toxic gamer talk and DEI policies have led to a brain drain. And we do know that yesterday, I believe yesterday or the day before yesterday, they had an emergency investors call and they said that Ghost of Yote looks really similar to, uh, to Assassin's Creed Shadows. You know, how are you going to do that? He's like, oh, and it, he's like, oh, we are actually a company of entertainment and we don't want to talk anything about, uh, you know, any kind of agenda, pushing agenda. And of course, they had that illegal thing by making that, you know, um, that uh, what's it called again? Mentorship program only for uh, people who identify as women or non-binary. And uh, one of the person who works there was basically like, uh, 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 um, uh, like couldn't answer the question properly and kept stuttering, right? So here's another word over here. Uh, alleged Ubisoft developers claim that the company either ignores the legitimate criticism of its business practices and the games or brushes off as a toxic gamer talk. They also claim that the company's DEI policies have led to loss of talent of both technical expertise uh, as well as creativity. Yeah, most of them, they, they usually, they, they usually leave. The good ones usually leave. But, uh, yeah. How, how, how do you feel about this so far, man? Like, 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 like <laughs> they've been shitting the bed for a very long time now. And, and like, I, I do want to bring up their stocks. So, so but what, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, I think they should have just released the game because they have. I don't know any ga major games coming out in November in particular, so they had a lot less competition. Had they released it there compared to Fe February, just a lot. I I just don't. I just can't think. I know one is avowed, and there there are many. There are a lot of coming out in February twenty twenty five. So not only are they already badly scrutinized, or it has a bad press. And the overall reputation of the company is at the bottom, record bottom. Uh, they're also going up against multiple other games that are likely to be better and perceived better. So I think they shouldn't have postponed it anymore. Like take take the L and just release the game and make the best out of the situation. But anyway, yeah. That, I yeah, it's like uh well, good luck to them. Maybe it'll work in their favor, but yeah, for me. They had better chance. They have a better chance, like release it in November, than like you know, fix it along the way. But yeah, that, that's yeah. that's what I feel. All right, let's go and read this. Let's see. A YouTuber legendary drops reports. He spoke with a number of Ubisoft developers and specifically asked one how Ubisoft internalizes and discusses general criticisms from players and the rest of the industry, whether that it's repetitive design, agenda-driven content, or predictable games. The developer responded with. At a high level, we rarely talk about it. At a project level, they just brush it off as toxic gamer talk. As Asman Gold correctly pointed out one of, uh, in one of his videos, Ubisoft is filled with toxic positivity that prevents growth. There it is. That means that you can't talk bad about it. You can only praise it. Mm -hmm. Right? We only want, we, if you have bad things to say about the game and it doesn't look good, we don't want to hear it. That's how you... That, how can that be constructive criticism if, if it's something needed? It's like, I don't want constructive criticism. All we want you to hear, uh, all we want you to say is how good it looks. If it's bad, we don't want to hear it. That's how you get shitty ass games like the past couple of games that Ubisoft has been releasing. That's so bad. It's such uh, uh, terrible uh, practice. Con too. Concord. Yeah, exactly. Right. After being asked about Japanese gamers sharing their own criticism, Assassin's Creed Shadows developer stated the criticism hasn't been talked about and Ubisoft only issued demands that we mustn't engage with discussion on that topic publicly. Yep. That's pretty fucking bad. And now you look at their stocks. Uh, oh, it went months? up a little. Yeah, I, know, went I up saw a little. Go, go, yeah, go below 10. Yeah, it was right over here. It was at 9 nine uh five nine five seven down yeah, over there, and I, it went back up to ten give give yeah the fact that it breached that below ten level it's probably gonna go down even further so it's probably gonna yeah. go that level even down even further yeah now on a on a different topic remember at first I talked about how uh ghost of uh yote could be really good and when uh you know atsu 
goes into the hot spring, she's going to remove all her clothes and she's going to have big tits and a nice ass. Not going to happen. I have, I have bigger chest than she does. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.